So I think we're live now. So hello, hello. This is another Facebook Live with my friend Craig. Hello. And so I am the author of the blog Para Aprender Inglés and El Blog del Inglés. That is the continuation of El Blog Para Aprender Inglés. It's in a new format. And Craig, yeah, I think you introduce you. You can introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Craig. I am a materials writer at mansioningles.com. There's lots of free courses there for you and lots of material to help you take your English to the next level. And I'm also a podcaster, and I have a podcast with my co-host, Reza, called Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. It's predominantly, mainly for Spanish speakers, and you can find it at inglespodcast.com and wherever you get your audio podcasts or music from we're everywhere and hello and welcome welcome and thank you for coming and so the today's topic it, i i find it very funny i enjoy this topic a lot because many times i had this situation where i was teaching and, and somebody asked me how do you say uh meterse en un jardín and i say how do you say that in english and i i i was Thinking so, I've been for years studying the, the say the similarity of these kind of expressions. We were talking with Craig before we started. Uh, before before we went live, we were talking about it because it's not, it's not. They are not really idioms, and they're not. Some of them could be idioms, so yeah. idiomatic expressions, or that are. they're not really also proverbs. What are they, Craig? They're a mixture. Well, uh, they're a yeah. mixture. Some of them have a literal translation from Spanish to English and English to Spanish. You just translate the words and they're the same. Um, and some of them have a metaphorical meaning and they're not ex not exactly the same. So they're idioms. So we've got a mixture for you. And I'm really looking forward to talking with Monica about these expressions because I'm obviously living in Spain, but there are some of these expressions as a as a person learning Spanish and speaking Spanish that I've never seen before. So I'm looking forward to learning some of these expressions as well, together with and, you and together and with Monica. Another comment I want to make, okay, I, I looked for expressions that we use in Spain. And if, if anybody in the audience is from South America, maybe, maybe they can share some of these expressions with us because it's, it, they might be different. Because this is expressions that you usually, at least I heard, uh, at the office, when I worked in an office, I heard all these expressions in the office, and and it was very funny because after a while, you you think that they, they, they kind of that they're like metaphors that describe uh, situations or behaviors of people that are quite interesting, and mm -hmm. some some of them have a story behind, no, and 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 most of them we don't know why uh, they, what is their their origin, no. So, well, let, let's start. Let's let's start. Let's say quick hello to Gemma, to oh, who's, yeah. who's joined Gemma, us. Hello, Gemma. Of course. And, and Rafa. And, and, Rafa's and here. Rafa. And Rafa also. Gemma and Rafa. Very loyal <laughs> followers. Good to see you have. again. Uh, so, let's start with the first one. Uh, and also, of course, uh, Rafa, I'm sure you can contribute uh, with the translations and all that because uh, sometimes I'm, I'm a little bit lost. With the translations. The first one is meterse en un jardín. Okay, everybody in Spain knows what is meterse en un jardín. Meterse en un jardín. This is for me, okay? I think I start and then you, yes, you, start. you do yes. the next one. Okay. That's yours. Meterse en un jardín in Spanish, uh, well, everybody knows that is uh, when you get into something very complicated or, for example, you say something that you shouldn't have said. Normally, th this is the case. You say something that you shouldn't have said. And um, it's better not to mention that because it's going to be there's going to be somebody hurt and there's going to be some consequences that you you cannot really foresee, no? So and it's not the English, same. It's not it's not the same as meterse la pata. No, 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 no. It's not it's, okay. it's not exactly meterse la pata. It's it's to start speaking about something that you shouldn't have mentioned because for example uh, somebody there is going to be hurt or somebody might not like it or you're going to have some consequences that you don't like okay 
some usually something complicated not not i don't know if somebody's saying some kind of to be a mess no to be in a oh, mess it, to be in a mess yeah yes yeah when they sort them but yes uh but have, in have, you, case, have yeah? you ever been fishing yes yes and you and and when you open the, I can imagine. I've never been fishing, but I can imagine, like with worms, if you open a can of worms, they go they everywhere, open. and it's exactly. and, and it's a, so. If you do that, then you're you're opening something that's going to have bad repercussions for you. Yes, right? yes, exactly. And and to open a can of worms is the same idea, no? And also, it's kind of disgusting, no? Yeah. I would say it's disgusting to open a can of worms. is quite very disgusting. So uh, if you open a can of worm, you don't want to do that actually, because the worms are going to be all over, and and it's disgusting. So it's the same idea. So uh, I could say, for example, hey Craig, um, I don't think you should mention that to to Angeles because you're going to open a can of worms. Okay, so just yeah. be quiet and 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 don't say that you bought the new the new motorcycle you know i i think you should just keep it secretly don't open that <laughs> how did how did you know i bought a new motorcycle this week that's incredible how, why did you know. open that can of worms that's going to cause me problems now <laughs> yes where's all the I money craig i bought a new motorcycle <laughs> and because of because of monica we've opened a can of worms and now everybody knows <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It's a big problem. You open a can of worms and you cannot get out of there. That's why people yep. say, that's why people say that. Don't open the can of worms. No te metas in ese jardín, okay? Yeah. Uh, don't mention it. Exactly. Okay. I think it's clear, no? Gemma and, and Rafa and Sihan, it's clear, no? The people yeah. that, that we know are watching. Okay, let's go and let's uh, see the uh, next one. The next one is for... Uh, Craig, and this is very funny also. And it's also interesting because I'm and, I'm guessing that ca cacharreria, cacharreria, <laughs> cacharreria, yeah, is is a china shop, right? Is that a place yeah, where you yeah. sell like no, china and cups cacharro. and bowls? No, it's, uh, no more cacharros. than cacharros. No, because china in Spanish in English is porcelana. Porcelana. Uh, cacharreria, not, not not so sophisticated because it's cacharros. It's like like uh, well, it can also be teacups and all kinds of things, but it's more like right. a combination of of, of, of pots or uh, I don't know different sets of for the table plates, and this is cacharros. A cacharro can be anything actually. But so they are things that could possibly break. Exactly. So yeah. If you have yes, I mean, um, a bull, un toro, yeah. or or an elephant anyway, in in a anyway. in a shop like this, it could be a disaster because they're going to knock things over, break things, everything's going to smash. So if you behave like a bull in a china shop, then you potentially could cause a disaster. And I remember my dad used to have a very bad temper and you can lose your temper and if you lose your temper then you can your arms go everywhere mm. and you can break things or you can throw things like a bull in a china sh a china shop so when my dad lost his temper that's how he would behave he would behave like a bull in a china shop without control so losing your temper losing control you're a bull in a china shop um, and it's obviously a, a negative thing you don't want to be a bull no. in a china shop but what's interesting is that in spanish you say elephant yeah because it's like like somebody who is very clumsy you can say uh, you can use this to refer to someone who is very clumsy also that yeah. like, like talking or doing things like because he's not he's not delicate with the things or he he is not precautious about you know some decisions Actually, the banner I uh, I sent to you had behind the photo of this. Uh, the, uh, I the noticed, pictures. and it's yeah. it's a lovely banner, and yes. you can see the because elephant see in the, the China bull. shop. Yeah, the bull in the China yeah, shop. In the, in the, so it describes perfectly the situation because it is the bull, like a bull in a China shop. Very beautiful. I think it's a beautiful expression, and and, and both. Rafa's laughing because 
yeah, you, yeah. He said you gave me a difficult word to say, which is yeah. cacharraria, cacharraria, <laughs> which with the, the yeah. Rrr, yeah, double sorry. R is difficult yeah. for English Very speaker difficult. to pronounce. Yeah, let's let's see the next one. And also, I love this because I feel like in Spanish it, it it's like um, Little Red Riding Hood uh, because it's to see the 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 wolf's ears, no. Uh, but in English, we have another expression, to see the writing on the wall, okay? So when you see the writing on the wall, uh, it's to be aware that something bad will probably happen soon, no? Uh, so, um, well, I think, how can I describe this? I'm thinking of the furlough with the Earth there because I think at the moment yeah, the yeah. unemployment figures are really bad. Yeah. yeah. But also there are lots of people who are on furlough. The word furlough yeah, is furlough the furlough is Earth. Yeah. Earth. So mm. when those finish, there's going to the numbers are just going to skyrocket. They're going to rise exponentially. And I think we can see the writing on the wall that after May, when the furloughs start to finish. The writing on the wall is the unemployment figures are going to increase. Yeah, but I, but I wanted furlough. to say that why the writing on the wall? Okay, I wanted also to say that that the writing on the wall because if something is written on the wall, it's very easy to see. No, that 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 is the idea, and the same as if you see a wolf, if you see a wolf, I mean, if if you just see the ears. If you just see the ears, you already know that something bad is going to happen because the wolves come. Usually for farmers, wolves, not for us, but for farmers are very bad animals because they eat the chicken or the, the, they eat the livestock. So if they see the wolf, they know that, not, not the wolf, the ears, no? So <laughs> they already know that something bad is going to happen. So the same for the writing on the wall. It's a very, it's a similarity there of, of telling you that something bad. So you could say like another, no one told him he was going to be fired, but he could see the writing on the wall. No, he could see the writing on the wall. So he already was thinking maybe I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fired. So that's what yeah. you're, you're saying, no? like with the, in the case of uh, furloughs, if you if the furloughs finish, well, but I don't want to talk too much about that because it's every day, oh, every day furloughs. Yeah, I know it's, but it's very, it's on, it's on everybody's mind and everybody's yeah. thinking about yeah. it. So, so then, yeah, it's obvious. It's something that's obviously going to happen. Easy to remember, right? It's easy very to clear. remember. Okay. Now, next one. Uh, next one. Uh, well. Uh, like water off a duck's back. Yeah, you said before that you like this expression because if you think of a duck, a duck has feathers. How do you say feathers in Spanish? Plumas. Uh, plumas. Yeah. So uh, when the water hits the, the the back of the duck, it it goes off very quickly. You just see it go off. It's like insulation. It doesn't go into the body of the duck. It just the water just falls off easily. So if somebody criticizes you. You can say, oh, it's it's water off a duck's back. I don't pay attention to it. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. No me importa. It's like water off a duck's back. So I didn't know that in Spanish you say, como el que oye llover. Yeah, it's like the um, the attitude that you have when you don't pay attention to anything. You don't care. You don't care. No. So, for example, oh, uh, they, for example, they we lost uh, the the match. Well, so oh, who cares, no? Como el que oye llover because it's raining. Well, it's raining. I don't care. So it's it's, it's an attitude. It describes very well an attitude that you have when you don't care about something. You you don't give any importance to that. So that's why. And it's the same in the, in a way in the, in in the case of the duck is the description of a natural fact. Because mm -hmm. this is a natural fact. If, if you, but I find it so cool because I can just see the ducks swimming and just, oh, I have insulation that you don't have. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I like that word too, insulation, because in, in, in English we have two words for aislante. And in Spanish it's only one. Is this, uh, 
es eh, aislante, ¿no? Aislar, en, es, en, en, para en inglés es insulation for walls or the dark or some mm -hmm. kind of material, ¿no? And yeah. isolated when it's the person, ¿no? The, the, when you as a person are isolated. So it's two words, and in English is only one, uh, in Spanish is only one word for two, two different things. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, this is... Um, My contribution, como el que oye llover en like water of a duck's back, como agua sobre la espalda de un pato. <laughs> so, revala. excellent. This is, okay. Okay, next one. The next one, uh, this one is very, um, very easy to learn because it's exactly the same. So, to take the bull by the horns, to take the bull by the horns. For example, Craig doesn't want to. Um, do uh, um, write uh, the project or work on a project he was thinking about it and he's just procrastinating and saying no not today tomorrow and another day and i go say okay come on okay <laughs> it's time to take the bull by the horns face it and do that because i was otherwise, thinking of I was thinking of this with my website because for yeah. a long time I've been thinking of changing my website and I think I need to take the ball by the horns and actually do it to confront the situation, to take action, to do something positive, take the ball by the horns. I need to to make a decision and, and, and act, do some action, positive action, definitely. Yeah. And, and this, everybody, I think, uh, well, you can comment, the ones that are watching, the, you can write comments about it. If, if, uh, if you have any, as I said before, if you have um, proverbs or, or some kind of idioms that you would like to comment about, just feel free to write it. So we yeah, can let us know. About that. Let us know, because uh, I, I probably I won't know the translation, but we can work it out together, no? So the next one. Bajate yeah, this is this is interesting because we use horses in English and you use donkeys, burros. So to yeah, get it's, off. Uh, bajarse del burro is, well, because I suppose it's because all these, many of these expressions come from the countryside. Yeah. And in the, in the past, a lot of people move around with, uh, with a burro, with a donkey, not with a horse. With horses was born for people who have more money, no? But because, uh, and a donkey is quite good to for transporting things, no? Better than horses, I think. I don't know. But uh, it's also interesting that in English, it's a high horse. So there's this yeah. idea that you're, you're sitting on the horse above somebody else and you're looking down, maybe looking even down your nose at someone, which is another expression. Yeah. So it's the idea that you know better than the other person and um, one example that occurred to me is and i don't know if you've experienced this monica but there are some grammar purists among mm -hmm. teachers that say this is the way you speak english there's no other way to use it and an example might be with uh, less and fewer with uncountable nouns you say oh yeah there's someone says in english that there's less people here today than there was and yesterday. Fewer, yeah, fewer, yeah. And someone says, no, it's not less people, it's fewer people. Fewer, yeah. But you're, yeah, that's correct. But so many native speakers say, say less, less. Mm. They say, yeah, it's, it's, I, I say you know, less, six less items less. or less in the supermarket yeah. queue. It should be six items or fewer because yeah. um, items is a countable noun. Yeah. But I might say to that person, look, get off your high horse because It's not a typical grammar mistake if so many native speakers speak that way. Maybe the language is changing and it's not such a bad error. So get off your high horse and look at the language possibly changing and maybe this is also correct now. Yeah, it's like admitting that you don't know everything, no? It's something like you have to admit that you're not always right. No? And also saying to somebody, don't be so superior. Yeah, you're not, exactly. You're not better than me. We're at the same mm -hmm. level. But in Spanish, and if, if anybody of the audience wants to correct me, in Spanish, I think bajarse del burro, for me at least, is not so much of 
uh, feeling superior, but um, ah, this is another connotation here. But it also means that uh, you don't want to uh, admit or give in. For example, you have a, you're you're making an argument. You're saying, "Oh, this is uh, this is this way. You have to go that way. You have to do this thing." You have to buy these. If you want to, for example, build a house, I know the perfect uh, way to do it. You have to do this, this, and that. And I said, no, that's not the way you do it. But he continues mm -hmm. and continues. <clears throat> and that is like, you don't want to admit or give in. And, yeah. and, and not so much of feeling superior, but give in. You don't want to give in. No? So they're being no, stubborn. No. Uh, it's stubborn. Tofu. Yes, it's too stubborn. And also because burros, donkeys, are stubborn, are very stubborn. So anybody, let's see if somebody knows this, is, if I'm correct. I uh, think. Rafa agrees yeah, with you, right. he's saying you're yeah, right. Rafa's yeah. saying you're right, because for it's not so much of feeling superior. So the translation, that's why it's so difficult, the translation, because you have to see the context. When when are you going to use the one expression and the other? Because as, as Craig explained, in the case of get off one's uh, high horse, it's more that you, you are... Uh, you superior. feel superior, no? You're a little bit arrogant in a way. Yes. Uh, but Bajarse Burro, no, it's, it's more stubborn. This one doesn't, this, he doesn't want to give in. He's very stubborn. And because donkeys are stubborn. Yeah. The, this is the reality. Okay, thank you, as, Rafa. This as is stubborn uh, as a donkey. Uh, yes. Okay, let's see. The next one is for me, I think. Oh, this is, uh, this is a funny one because. I suppose I can imagine uh, somebody uh, uh, sweeping the floor, but that is to sweep the floor. So when you say that you sweep the floor um, for, for for your own for your own house, not for the anybody else. And in fact, I do this. For example, if <laughs> if there are leaves outside their home, they also the neighbors have some leaves, but. But when sometimes I, I try to do it for the neighbor a little bit, but of course you don't have time and you just sweep the, the leaves that are on your um, entrance and not the neighbor's entrance. So in a figurative way, and actually this is an idiom because I, I, I find it like a, like an idiom because in a figurative way means that you only care about yourself, okay? You're only... Um, uh, to look after number one is to look after number one. Let me edit that. This is okay. So in English is, and it's usually look, quite negative, isn't it? If you say, "Oh, you always look after number one," that's usually a negative thing. You're yes, being selfish. Negative, You're being, being very selfish. selfish. Being selfish, but you might also use it in the opposite way. You sometimes somebody who's too generous and who's always doing things for other people could say. Uh, well, one day you should at least look after number one, no? No, mm -hmm. you could also say that, no? You yes, say one day for, for, for you, no? not for the other, not, uh, not, not for the others. So you could, I think you can use it in, in, in any of those uh, meanings, no? Either you're too selfish and you're always doing this, you're only looking after number one, okay? Only worrying about yourself. Or siempre estás barriendo para casa. Or you should, you should one day look after number one because mm -hmm. either if you don't do that, the, you're not going to get that job. For example, that that could be. Let me see if what you, uh, if you if you don't sweep your house, who's going to sweep it for you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jose, Jose Ignacio. It, it looks like he's from Chile because yeah. we said before that different countries yeah. may have different expressions. And he's saying, "Hi guys, thank you for your for your teaching. Pleasure." In Chile, we have a funny expression which is more jerk than young dogs, which is más ah. huevón, huevón que los perros nuevos. Do you know yeah. that from Chile, Monica? I yes, I know this. I know this expression. I I, I know this expression. Más huevón que los perros nuevos. Well, I don't. I I understand what he means. It means because little puppies, the dogs, uh, actually they don't. Um, they they don't know anything and they make many mistakes at the beginning no also any animal any puppy mm -hmm. or any any kitten they they don't know 
And so they, for example, they, they, they burn their whiskers or they, because they, the first time they try something, no, it's, it's, it's like any, in any species that you have this problem, no? Yeah. Uh, that is because the young dogs are very clumsy. Yeah, that's, that's true. But I was thinking that if in Spanish from Spain, we have an equivalent expression and in English, what, what, how could we say that? More young than young dogs, no. I'm trying uh, to think. I can't think of a of a. Of no, an English we will have to look for it, but uh, it, it would like be it, something though. like, uh, yeah, he's he's very, he, is a very silly uh, person. Is, is is meaning if you say that it's it's a it's a kind of insult, no? So it is 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 he's so stupid that it's it's, it's, it's as stupid as a puppy, no? <laughs> something like that and Rafa's commented on the expression we had before to get yeah. off your high horse could be in Spanish uh, bajar bajar estos estos humos. Humos. yes yes mm. yes good Rafa yes good good, good feedback because I, bajar el burro doesn't necessarily cover that yeah so uh, okay thank you Jose Ignacio also for that expression sorry I, I cannot think in English or in Spanish from Spain the similar similar uh, ah, tener las manos, Rafa, sí, something is tener las manos de trapo, yeah, well, but the, the, Jose Ignacio was saying something more that like an insult, it's, it's like an insult, he's so stupid that he's like a puppy, you know, it's, it's, it's something like that. Uh, Maybe in English you'd say someone's really green, if someone's green, they're, very, they're, they're, they're very yeah, naive yeah. and they don't have a lot of experience or common sense. It's not exactly an idiom, but you could say, yeah, he's yeah, too green. Yeah, in Spanish, too. In Spanish, you can also say, well, está muy verde todavía. Yeah. That, that is not the same of being un viejo verde, which is another story. <laughs> <laughs> being un viejo verde o estar muy verde. That's this being and, and, and you know, study said in Spanish is quite different, no? Okay, yeah. let's go with the next one. Uh, let me let me go to what's the, What's the next one? Uh, I was doing... Uh, okay, the next one is number eight. Uh, this is funny too. Ah, to put the cart before the horse. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of planning a holiday for Easter. Uh, but then it's silly because I don't know what's going to happen in Easter with the situation at the moment. So planning a holiday now is putting the cart before the horse. It's arranging something, planning something, thinking about something without knowing what's going to happen. So it's kind of in reverse if you think about it. The horse pulls the cart. So if you put the cart before the horse, that makes no sense. Does that what it, is that what it means in Spanish? In yes, yes, yes. It's reverse. Which exactly. is our re, it's our reverse. You're doing it. Yeah, it's reverse. Down. Uh, you cannot you cannot start a house building the roof. It's crazy. It's, it's impossible. Fall. It's going to fall. That doesn't make sense. So. It's this putting is, the cart before this the horse. Case, this expression is really like uh, like um, a piece of advice. It's really a piece of advice. You shouldn't start the the house uh, by the roof, you know. To and the yep. same to put the cart before the horse. No, it, it's exactly the same. It's it's not really an idiom. It's not really a a proverb. It's just like 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 uh, some kind of advice. It's, it's, uh, so, so if somebody says something that doesn't make any sense, que no tiene sentido, you could say, no, you're putting the cart before the horse. You need to wait and see what's going to happen before you yeah. make plans, for yeah. example. Gemma says... Uh, uh, yeah. Gemma is, uh, is in, yeah, she's, uh, she's uh, suggesting que mucho abarca, poco aprieta. Or what does that mean? Uh, uh, that means that if, if you do too many things at the same time, you're going to do none. And and this in English, I know this one. This is um, uh, you are like um, a master. I, I know the last part, the master of none. Um, the, the, this expression is the, uh, I have it on the tip of my tongue, but I cannot. <laughs> on say. the tip of your tongue. Yeah, this is like a uh, many whole and, and a master of none. A ma a, the end of the sentence is and, and a master of none. And uh, a master of none. You are um, jack of all trades. Uh, yes, jack of all a trades. Jack of all trades, a uh, master jack of, of none. Jack of all trades and a master of none. Of none, yeah. Jack of all trades is como 
Eh, Juan de, de, todas las, de, de todas las profesiones, that you do many things, but you, you are a master of nothing. This is que mucho abarca, poco aprieta. ¿no? So, jack of all trades and master of none. And haciendo y deshaciendo, that, that is practice makes perfect. The second mm -hmm. one is pra practice. I actually don't use the second one. The, the first one I, I do use, but the second one is the first time I see it. Haciendo y deshaciendo va, se, va, se va aprendiendo. That is, um, practice makes perfect. This but is the does, proverb. Uh, what does abarcar mean? Uh, abarcar. abarcar is, is uh, scope. The, 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 to, to ex oh, how can I say that? To extend yourself. Help me, Rafa. Okay. How do you say abarcar? <laughs> so when, when you... Rafa is spread, to, spread, spread, spread yourself. Uh, yeah, spread. And yeah, apretar, yeah, apretar is like yeah, comprimir, apretar, like to push inside, to push yeah, together. To tighten something, to, to put tighten. it very tight. Tighten, yeah. to tighten. And to abarcar is the opposite. So, okay. yeah. so that makes sense. Mucho, yeah, to, to, so, okay, so jack of all trades and master of none. And, uh, Practice makes pre uh, perfect. But Practice makes those perfect. Two, in this case, here you see, these are proverbs. These are proverbs. What we are talking about is more, like I said before, expressions. No, Let's mm -hmm. go back to our, um, I think it's my turn, no? Yes. This one is a funny one and I love it because I was always thinking, how do you say in English, la pescadilla que se muerde la cola? And... And in English, it's the it's a catch twenty two situation. And why I, I before we started the the show, I was talking to Craig and I said, I know it comes from a novel because this is actually an American expression. It's not English. It's not British. Correct. It's, yeah. it's, it's American, and it and 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 it is from a book that is called like that, catch twenty two situation. And the author is called Joseph Hell. And it was written in 1961, no? And so an example of this is, uh, well, people know in Spanish what is la pescadilla que se mueve la cola, no? Que se mueve la cola, because it's a situation that, that you go back to the same problem all the time, no? Uh, uh, so... Um, Do you remember the example from the book? No, 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 no. He, the, in the book, there's a character who flies yeah. in the war, in the Second World War, and he's a pilot, and he drops bombs on Germany. Yeah. And he, it's very dangerous because when you're flying the airplane, they're shooting at you from the ground, and the other airplanes are trying to hit you with bombs, and it's a very, very dangerous thing to fly a mission. And the pilot wanted to stop flying. And the only way to stop flying is is to say that you are mad, you're crazy, you have psychological problems. So you request a psychological evaluation from the doctor. But if you request a psychological evaluation, that's something that's not crazy. That's something yeah, sane. Really. That's something normal. So that's why it's catch-22. He can't ask for the doctor's permission because if he's crazy, he's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So it's catch twenty two. There's no, there's no way to escape the situation. There's nothing you can do about it. But I, I don't exactly remember why the name catch twenty two. Do you know? Because it, I know it's, that is the book's name and all that. But but, but it, there's no right reason why it's twenty two. It's just that if you think of two, like a two and a two, it's an equal thing. They look very similar. So the two twos together. I like the equal situation and there's no escape. There's no way to escape it. Another example would be the pension age. It used to be 65. When you get to 65, you can retire. But if you get to 64 and they increase the pension age to 67, oh, it's catch right. 22. And then when you're 66, they increase it to 70. You never arrive at the age where you can retire. There's no escape. It's catch twenty two. Yeah, and in, in in Spanish, perhaps there's a slightly different meaning because it's it's more like um, a cycle that yeah, well, there's it, it, it a cycle that cannot be stopped. Exactly. Uh, uh, a vicious cycle. A vicious. 
cycle, no? And mm -hmm. uh, let me see the comments and uh, let me see it here the comments. Uh, when you take a lot of things, the uh, wall when you take a lot of things, the wall goes like around the city, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because of saving the Christmas for Christmas, we are in this current situation. What, what does he say? Uh, yeah, always is the same. We're in, because of saving, ah, saving the Christmas, yeah, because we, yeah. yeah. The, that's a good example, Rafa. Yeah, that's good, that's good, Rafa, yes. Mm -hmm. the, the situation where if you do one thing, uh, another thing uh, has, as a result, a damage. You know, if you if you want to save Christmas, you're going to have problems with COVID, no? And, and, and if, if you work, if you try to solve COVID, then you're not going to have Christmas. Exactly. Uh, Jose Ignacio has uh, an expression for horns because we said like a bull in a in a china shop. Uh, yeah. To yeah, put the true. horns on it's someone. It's to cheat on someone, but this is like a, a husband and wife. They you know they cheat on each other. That's to put the horns. Uh, or you could say to two time someone, you're two timing your uh, partner. Yeah, two timing. But also there's another expression. I don't remember now. There's another expression. Apart, apart I would say cheat on someone, but there's another expression. It was um there's a formal expression which is to commit adultery. No, 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 no. Not that way. No, it's a funny <laughs> no, of course. You can say something very, very formal, but no, no, I didn't mean that one. I mean, uh, like uh, the, this, uh, this one similar to the horns, uh, the, uh, because I don't have it here. We have to look for it. But there is one. Uh, okay, uh, for you. It's because Sahara. we behave ourselves, Monica. We don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> we don't know those expressions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very funny because you can speak about this. Uh, it's very common. And is this my, is this for me to pull the chestnuts out yeah, of the fire? Yeah, for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, let's imagine that I'm traveling to visit Monica in Madrid and I'm traveling from Valencia to Madrid and I have a problem with my car. You know, the phrasal verb to break down when you break down on the motorway, your car stops working. So imagine I'm getting close to Madrid and my car breaks down and it's, there's nobody to help me. And I phone Monica and I say, Monica, can you pick me up? Can you come with your car and give me a lift and help me? because my car's broken down and Monica comes to help me on the motorway. So she's really pulled the chestnuts out of the fire for me because she saved me from a difficult situation. Oh, and such I think a nice example. Such it's a nice example. Like, uh, very similar in Spanish and it's a direct <laughs> translation as well. Yeah, yeah. You, when you have a situation that is difficult and somebody helps you, you can also, there's another expression in English, which is very similar, which is to save someone's bacon. If I say, oh, Monica, you really saved my bacon. Have you heard uh, that before? Yeah. Save someone's bacon. Yeah, yeah. You really you save, save my bacon. You saved my life. You saved my bacon. Yeah. You've really yeah, helped me. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. But I, I can imagine because here in, in, in Madrid, many times in the winter, you see these these people now you don't see anything because it's, everything is closed but normally uh, in the winter you see that they are uh, roasting these chestnuts in the streets and when it's cold no and i suppose if of course if you if you take those those chestnuts you're going to burn yourself especially with the hand because it's the yeah. fire no and that's why where it comes from i suppose because you you you're going to burn yourself and 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 so the, whoever does that has to make an effort, no? because you, it's, it's something to, and it's exactly the same in English. No? But I, do, you, I, do you have a real fire in your home? Do you ever roast chestnuts on your fire at home? We did it somewhere, but no, at home I don't have a fireplace, no. No, no, no. We, we don't either. But in the UK we had a real fire, so we yeah. used to roast chestnuts every Christmas, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that is nice, also marshmallows. So, same. But it's, that, that is something that, for me, I did when I was a kid. I was very, very old. Mm -hmm. But, okay, let's see the next one. Uh, this, is, this one is for me, and it's, it's quite easy. Because in Spanish, Spanish from Spain, I don't know the rest of um, Spanish-speaking world, but Spanish from Spain, uh, we say, son lentejas, o las tomas o las dejas. So meaning, take it or leave it, or something that, for example, uh, I'm looking for a job. And it's not the job that I 
that I really want because I want a higher salary, but I need to eat. And, and so my friend says, hey, come on, Monica, take it or leave it. But, but you, 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 this is your, your opportunity. You cannot be nagging about this, no? Say, no, not exactly what I want, uh, okay? I think you could also use it in, a, in the literal way, no? Take it mm -hmm. or leave it. Uh, this is also not, uh, an expression, no? Uh, you have, I don't know, you can give an example of a literal meaning, not, not solentejas in this case, take it or leave it. I, you have the umbrella here, take it or leave it. No? That's or if you, the, if I, if you're selling your car and I say, look, Monica, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you 600 euros yeah. for your car. Yeah. I'm only yeah. going to offer you 600 euros, take it or leave it. You accept yeah. it or you don't. Yeah. But in this case, the meaning is not solentejas because solentejas, eh, the connotation here is, is, Look, you have no other possibility. Mm, take it or leave it, no? Solentejas. This is what it, I don't have anything else to offer. And the full expression in Spanish is son lentejas, yes. coges o, las o tomas, dejas? O, o las tomas o las dejas. O las dejas. O las dejas. O las dejas. That's the okay. expression in I like, I like that. Uh, uh, son lentejas, because it rhymes, no? Son lentejas. I'm, o las tomas I'm, going, to, I'm going to try and use that yeah. in context yeah. this week. Okay, good. So, so next one. Uh, oh, this one. I, I wanted this for myself, but I'm going to pass it to you. No, no, <laughs> you you can you can use it. I like it. I like the Spanish I translation. I, a, peel, I, a peeled bum or a peeled ass. Exactly, a peeled bum. <laughs> Let me give <laughs> an example about Monica. Honest? Not not because of Monica's bum. I'm going to give an example. <laughs> Not so personal because if you notice, Monica creates really lovely banners for these Facebook Live yeah. presentations, and she's been creating banners for a long time to go with her blog and also publishing them on Facebook and on Twitter, doing lots of infograms to help you with your English. And she's an old hand at creating these lovely banners because she's been doing it for a long time. She's very good at it. So she's an old hand at doing it. So it's a very positive expression. If you're an old hand at something, you're very good at it. You have a lot of experience and you do it well. Yeah, and also, to, to be honest, I didn't exactly know what the meaning of tener el culo pelado meant in Spanish. <laughs> I didn't know, but I found it very funny. And, uh, and somebody said to me, ah, it's to have experience. And I went to my husband, you know, my husband is Dutch. But what's the connection to have experience with a peeled bum? I don't get the... <laughs> what, what? The reason is, I thought, the reason is because when you have experience in something, it's because you've been sitting for a long time. Creating banners. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I mean, I mean, for example, because in Spanish, in Spanish, the meaning is, for example, when you study, when you study, or when you do any project, or you have to sit, you know, yeah. you have to sit, and also the there are expressions referring to elbows, poner los codos, no, you okay. you have to you have to sit for a long time, to 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 be able to obtain a result. So right. if you sit for a long time, your culo suffers. Your ass <laughs> suffers, no? <laughs> so I said, but uh, that's why, that's why, the, the, that's, I think that's the origin of the expression. And the funny thing is that my yeah. husband, he's, an, he, he's a foreigner, so he, I asked him, uh, being Dutch, he's been here for a long time, but I was sure that he didn't know this expression. And I went to him and said, do you know what is in Spanish, tener el culo pelado? And he's, he, he was like, no, what is that? And, <laughs> <laughs> so it's to have experience. That's the reason I feel bummed. Uh, to, but in English, it's much um, less vulgar, no? less vulgar expression, like to be an old, ser una mano vieja en algo, no? to have experience. Yeah. Let's see the common. Yeah, to be, an, to be yeah, an old hand. Uh, to be an old hand, yeah, to be an old hand. At something. Much more politically correct. Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one. Um, okay, this one is, is it my turn or your turn? No, it's my turn, no? Your know. turn. Yeah. Uh, okay, this one is very funny too because um, it's when you are, for example, asking for help uh, 
or asking someone to do something and they come late, no? So in English is like locking the barn door after the horse has bolted. So it's, it's como, uh, this sometimes for, for if, if you have an intermediate level, perhaps you don't understand the, the whole sentence and it, and it means, uh, echarle el cerrojo a la, a, la, a la puerta del establo después de que se haya escapado el caballo. That's the whole sentence, ¿no? The whole sentence. So the, 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 the horse runs away and you go and lock the door. Doesn't make any sense. So, meaning you come with a solution after uh, the problem, for example, you cannot solve the problem anymore. No. I have a good Thank example you. for this. Imagine uh, but, but that Let me give you an example. Okay, you I, have I, an example. Yeah, I, I think. After, okay. the, um, after the burglary, they install an alarm system, but it's locking the barn door. I have a very bad <laughs> example. <laughs> No, it's a perfect example. That's yeah, what I was thinking of. Your looking, your yeah, house exactly. gets burgled, somebody uh, yeah. breaks in and steals things, yes, and exactly. after you put the alarm, that's the perfect example. Yes. It's too late. It's, it's exactly. too late. To take, to take precautions after damage has occurred. So after the burglary, they install an alarm system, but it's locking the barn door. In this case, the, the example is just halfway. It's saying it just halfway because it's too long, no? It's like locking oh, it's the very, it's very lit it's very literal yes. in English, yes. but help yes. me understand the Spanish translation because uh, when I saw it as mangas verdes, yeah, mangas I, I are like sleeves, right? Like green yeah, sleeves. Yeah, I I What's... think okay, I I think I'm sorry if, if I'm wrong, but I think this refers to a time where where the the police, uh, I think like what the civil had a uniform with with uh, that was green, no. And it mean ah. it meant when that you call the police and and they came late, no? And and mm -hmm. it was referring to the to the suit they the were uniform. wearing. I think the uniform, yeah. Probably that Possibly. is the origin of this. I think I read somewhere, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. If somebody from the from the audience knows this, uh, I would appreciate that the, they write a comment on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, this this expression is quite literal. So. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. You could you lock the 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 door and then the horse was already running around there. So you couldn't prevent it. Too late. Exactly. Too late. So taking precautions after the damage has occurred. It's like you okay, know, your, your girlfriend one. your girlfriend gets pregnant and then you use condoms. For <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> very literal. Yeah, that's very literal. That's, that's exactly that's exactly the meaning of this. The greatest okay, thing okay. since sliced bread. Okay, in my opinion, the greatest thing since sliced bread for me is Google Maps because I'm always getting lost. And before I had a mobile phone with Google Maps, it was really difficult for me to find my way in a car. And it was a fantastic invention. The greatest thing since sliced bread because if you think about it, it's really easy to slice bread. But if you buy it and it's sliced, it makes your life a bit easier. So the idea with this expression I, is that it's a fantastic thing, a brilliant invention, and it's changed your life for the better. But you know what I'm thinking? That what? this is not a good translation then. Now, no. I was already thinking when I wrote it, I thought I'm Crear, not sure, this is not sure. Because you're Rey this, del Mambo. Yeah, because this is for me, at least how I understand Crear del Rey del Mambo, it refers to a person refers more to a person that he thinks is he's very good at something and he's the best he thinks he's the best and uh, and and that doesn't it you wouldn't say that for technology you would only say it for a person okay if he thinks he 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 thinks he is el rey del mambo he thinks he is the best but not the not the phone or not some kind of uh in English, uh, I would say, you know. in a crude way, in a not yeah. very polite way, I would say the dog's bollocks or yes, the bee's the, the bee's knees. The bee's, the bee's knees. knees. Yeah, that's another. The, he, the bee's knees. That's that's the right expression. Maybe I took the wrong translation of that. Okay, that because the greatest thing since the sliced bread is not exactly the same. That this like in Spanish, I think, is 
es lo, I don't know, but it's something like, eh, o sea, es lo último, es la última moda. Mejor, es, mejor cosa del mundo. La mejor cosa del mundo, but it's used for an object, not for a person, ¿no? So that, that, that is, yeah, that it is would probably great. be for an object or an invention. An object. The mobile yeah. phone is the greatest thing since yeah. sliced bread. Let me it see solves a lot of problems. Because Ignacio is saying something. Um, we also to use the, the idiom to play to play, when, for example, you're alone and you have to spend time with friends. Who are, ah, okay. In English, yeah. it's the third wheel. Probably yeah. the origin is from Venice, Italy, where you're in a small boat and your date is a third person is playing. A, Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. It's, it's, yeah, this, the, this, I don't, I, I don't, to play the violin, yeah, it is like you're, um, you're a third party there that nobody wants, really. Yeah, yeah the third yeah. wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> that is not very uh, well, welcome uh, in a, In a, or you're just um, bothering, no? bothering the couple that is busy. No? Exactly. So bother, you know? Yeah, there's another expression. Ah, uh, oh, Rafa has for the, es la repera. Yeah, pero la repera is positive in Spanish. Es, y el rey del mambo no, because it's, crees el rey del mambo is that you say, no, he thinks he's the best, he's arrogant, he's, mm, no. Uh, but ser la repera, for me at least, is positive. It's a positive expression to be, be the best. But, but it's true, Rafa, that you could say this for for um, for an object. Oh, the mm -hmm. phone that Craig bought, or this motorbike that he bought, is la repera. So is the that you could say that. Um, so it's similar to the the greatest thing since sliced bread. So. Is the, yeah, la repera would be, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the last one. Ah, let me see if there's any other. Uh, ah, yes, for the uh, uh, Craig's idioms. Yes, 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 exactly. La repera. Yeah, la repera. Is, that's, that's exactly what I said, yeah. And now okay. the last one is for Craig and is... To go to hell or oh, to go to which, shit. Um, yeah. Irse al garete, which I've Irse heard. Al Irse yeah. al garete. Irse I've al heard garete. that. Yeah. But I've, I don't use it, and I'd like to start using that. So obviously, when something goes to pieces or it's very negative, yeah. Um, and this, uh, I know I keep using the example of the pandemic, but it's what we're living at the moment. So last last March in 2020, the world kind of went to hell, or yeah. it went to shit when it the pandemic reached every country, travel stopped. I know Rafa's suffering at the moment with his profession as a tour guide so the whole hospitality hospitality industry kind of went to shit and yeah. you'd say that in spanish wouldn't you se fue al garete. Yeah, se fue al garete. what, se what se does garete mean literally monica garete. i think it's a hole but hole. I, i i don't i am not 100 sure if uh, rafa knows uh, or, or gema uh, is is um i think it's a hole But, with, uh, with going to hell, there's an expression from uh, originally from American English, but now it's used in 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 British and Australian English as well. To go to hell in a handbasket. Ah, in is, a handbasket. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, a full yeah. expression. I think yeah. that comes from the American Civil War. Oh. So if something goes yeah. to hell in a handbasket, it's a complete disaster. It's a travesty. It's destroyed. Completely useless. It's completely gone to hell yeah. or gone to shit. Yeah. Yeah, Rafa says that he doesn't know exactly what garete is. Ah, oh, fastidiar. Yeah, I know Gemma is fastidiarse algo, but the, the, the word um, garete, garete, I think it is, it's a hole, un, un agujero. That's what I think it is. I never thought about it. I don't know what garete is. Yeah, Rafa says, but maybe Virginia, palabra que se utiliza. No, somebody, oh, somebody found it, Virginia. That's good. Thank you very much. Uh, Irse al garete is, also says in, in uh, wordreference.com to be adrift, to fall ah, through. Ah, very good. To go you know that. You see, you, only, you always learn these new things. I didn't know that. So it means that it's a ship or a, a vase, vessel, vessel can be any, any kind of vessel, that, that, is not, uh, that doesn't have really a, like a captain um, steering the wheel, no? Uh -huh. and, and it's... Um, And, and just goes with the with the current, 
to be adrift to to be adrift yeah to yeah. go belly yeah. up yeah belly up to go belly up to go belly up to go bad to go wrong yeah, thank you Virginia yeah. yeah yeah thank you very much Virginia because you looked at the looked it up and it's uh it's a new for me it's to be new i didn't know that shall so, we go through the list again what uh, you got, yes yes beginning? yes yes yeah well uh so let's see let's do a review uh so i'll say i'll say the english you say the spanish okay meterse en un jardín. to open a can of worms um como un elefante en una cacharrería that's like me to be a like a bull in a china shop <laughs> Uh, ver las orejas al lobo. To see the writing on the wall. Okay. Como el que oye llover. Like water off a duck's back. Coger el toro por los cuernos. To take the bull by the horns. In San Fermín. Bajarse del burro. To get off your high horse. Look, uh, sorry, I'm having some technical trouble because I cannot go any... I don't know what happens now. It doesn't. Uh, it's, it's not working. Like, it's not working. No. It's gone to hell. It, it's gone to hell. Yeah, because it's like like uh, it's blocked. What is this? Strange. I don't know. I'll go back to comments. Let, let's go back to the studio. Like uh, like they say in the television. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's go and now about. from our <laughs> correspondent in Madrid, <laughs> it's Monica. Thank yeah, you, Monica. Yeah, let's, let's go. I think we. <laughs> Uh, out of control, it says, uh, yeah, Virginia says, uh, yeah, it came said out of control, yes, came out of control, and uh, that's carete, and there's a lot of words uh, with sailor slangs, yes? Yeah, there's this, lots of, I there's can lots see of the, expressions the, oh, now in English. I get, now the banners work, okay, we're back in this uh, race okay. to you. We're back in uh, business, back to the uh, studio. Barret para casa. So look after number one. Okay, em, empezar la casa por el tejado. To put the cart before the horse. La pescadilla que se muerde la cola. It's catch 22. Um, sacar las castañas del fuego. To pull the chestnuts out of the fire. Son lentejas. Take it or leave it. Tener el culo pelado. <laughs> 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 that makes me laugh. <laughs> to be an old to be an old hand at something. Monica's an old hand at technology. No, this is true, but well. Uh, it's like locking the barn door after the horse has bolted. We're not sure about this one, okay. But the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um It's all gone to hell or it's all gone to shit. Okay, perfect. So, vete al carajo. If you need to say something, vete al carajo. Yeah, vete, yeah, vete al carajo. carajo I remember that. That's the, the that's the basket on the top of the mast of the ship, Virginia, I think. Oh, um, okay. The carajo is where they used to look for land. I didn't know that for, either. Yeah. yeah. I know the expression, vete al carajo. There, there are lots of um, expressions about the sea, Virginia, yeah. and also about bullfighting in Spanish. There's lots yeah. of idioms and expressions. And yeah, um, also in in English, not bullfighting, obviously. But okay, thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate all those comments and the participation here in the in the pie in the in the side. The pie there's very few people. It's not like in Mansion English that we have a great audience because because uh, Craig has lots of fans. Uh, no, but. Uh, we can also interact with the with the audience, no? Because it's it's very small, so it's it's um, we can take care of them, all of them, all the comments and everything, no? Just thanks for watching, them. and if you're watching the replay, thanks yeah. for spending time with us, and yeah. we hope these these yeah. expressions are useful to you. And thanks yeah. for watching live. Thanks, um, Emma. You take care as well. And don't forget to visit uh, podcast podcast. Well, you just say your name, English podcast. Ah, you, can visit, you can visit yeah. inglespodcast.com to listen to our podcast. And, of course, where you get your podcasts from, we're on everywhere, every platform. And also Mansion Inglés, which is passing on the bottom of the screen there. Thank you, Monica. That's our website for courses. And we have a store that we also sell courses apart from the free stuff that you can find on the website.
Okay, and, and we, we have also Blog del Inglés that you can visit. And also, if you want private classes, EPI. And if you want company classes, there's another company called Apprentias. Okay, and you can look, uh, everything on, on the website and you can contact us. Okay, that's it for today. And thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back, and, and I, I will be back in 15 days, but Craig will be back next week. No? Yes. Nación in, Inglés. I mentioned English, so we'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching and keep studying English and stay safe wherever you are. Take care of yourselves and be careful. Be careful. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.